Welcome to the next session. Today we're going to be looking at the fascia iliaca block. This is a local anaesthetic injection injected in the groin to provide pain relief to patients presenting to the hospital with hip fractures. It's especially important in this population as it can reduce the overall requirement for systemic opioids. So let's have a look in more detail at what the fascia iliaca block is and then how we'd go about administering it. So to start with, the fascia iliaca block targets two or three main nerves. These are the femoral nerve, the obturator nerve, although this is variable, and the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. To understand how it does this, we need to look at the anatomy in a little bit more detail. So let's draw a diagram. We have our anterior superior iliac spine, our pubic tubercle, and so this is the lateral side, and this is the midline of the patient. So we want to target the nerves and avoid the vascular structures running in this area. So to begin with, we have our femoral artery, we have our femoral vein, and we have the nerve running more laterally over here. So we've got the nerve, So we want to administer our injection to avoid these vascular structures and so the safest place to do this is laterally to them. So identifying our landmarks we would first divide the line from the pubic tubercle to the anterior superior iliac spine into thirds. We can do this with our fingers. So that's a third over there and that's a third over there. The point that we want to administer our injection is at the boundary between the lateral third and the medial two thirds. So over here, as depicted by the black line. As you can see, this is lateral to the artery and the vein comfortably. We also want to make sure that the point for our injection is one centimeter distal to the line between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. And this is marked with the X over here. So we've seen where we'd inject our injection on this image, but let's have a look at what we're doing in the cross section. So again, if we take a lateral over here, we have our medial side here, and we take a cross section. So we have the patient's feet coming out of the wall and we have the layers over here. So this would be the skin, this would be the next layer, the third layer, and then we'd have the muscle over here. So we know that we have our uh, vasculature running over here. So that's the femoral artery. This is the vein over here. And we have our femoral nerve traveling here with our lateral femoral cutaneous nerve here and our obturator nerve much more medially. Over here, we have the iliacus muscle. Okay, so in terms of what layers we're going to go through, we have the skin, the fat over here, here we have the fascia lata, and here we have the fascia iliaca, hence giving its name to the block. So when we put our needle in we said it was going to be at the one-third, two-third boundary between the lateral and medial sides, round about here, 
we inject our needle through the skin, through the fascia lata, and then through the fascia iliaca into this compartment over here, which is separate to the compartment that the artery and the vein are in between the fascia lata and the fascia iliaca. And this will help to explain how we administer the block. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail. The first step is making sure that we have the correct patient and the correct indication for the fascia iliaca block. So as we said previously, this will be for a patient typically with a hip fracture. It can also be used in paediatric patients with femoral fractures um, to provide analgesia before putting on a cast, although this should only be done after consultation with the um, orthopedic or paediatric team. So, first thing is after we identify the correct patient, we want to make sure that we there are no contraindications to giving this. And these contraindications include patients who may have a bleeding tendency. So who, for example, are on warfarin and have an INR of over 1.5. Other contraindications include if the patient refuses and they're competent to do so. And thirdly, if the patient has had any previous surgery to this area, for example, femoropopliteal bypasses and therefore may have different uh, vascular anatomy in which case it may not be reliable for us to ensure that we are missing the vascular anatomy. So, once we've made sure that there are no contraindications, we have the correct patient, we want to set up for our procedure. So, equipment that we'll need for our procedure includes the local anaesthetic, and one will be to numb the skin, which uh, can be used, such as 1% lidocaine, We need a um, antiseptic wipe. We need a blunt needle, and we'll explain why that's the case. We need our local anaesthetic injection that we're going to infiltrate into the fascia uh, aliaca compartment. And typically this could be 0.25% either chirocaine, which is longer acting than lidocaine or levobupivacaine. And then finally we need a uh, small dressing or plaster to put over the top. So. And the large syringe to administer the local anaesthetic. So the first step is to identify our landmarks as we've talked about first. So that one third to two third um, lateral to medial uh, boundary between the anterior superior ilex spine and pubic tubercle. And once we've identified that, we go one centimeter distal. Once we've identified that, we place uh, antiseptic wipe over that and then local anesthetic lidocaine just into the skin layer to numb the area for the patient. Wait for that to work for two to three minutes. And that gives a mark as to where we're going to inject as well, so we don't have to measure again. Once that's worked, we would then uh, draw up our local anaesthetic, so 0.25% levobupivacaine, into our syringe and place a blunt needle on the end. Now the reason we're placing a blunt needle is because we want to feel when we're into the fascia iliaca compartment. And this will be felt as characteristically two pops. The first pop we'd feel is when we're going through the fascia lata. The second pop through the fascia iliaca. And so we want to feel for those two pops, which is easier to do with a blunt needle. Once we've felt those two pops, we'd want to again ensure that we're not um, infiltrating our local anaesthetic into a uh, vascular, uh, into femoral artery or femoral vein, and therefore we'd aspirate to ensure there's no um, flashback of blood before injecting. If we're getting high resistance, it may be that we've gone too far into iliacus muscle and we may need to withdraw a little bit. We'd inject five millilitres of our local anaesthetic and then again withdraw to see if we're getting any flashback to ensure we're still in the correct place. It's quite a low resistance compartment and so it should be quite easy to infiltrate the local anaesthetic. Once we've done that, aspirating every five mils to ensure we're in the same place, we then withdraw the needle and place a simple dressing over the skin. It's key to document that we've done this in the notes and also key to monitor the patient's observations for the next at least half an hour to one hour 
as any complications with the local anaesthetic tend to occur in this time. Complications include, um, if injected into an artery or a vein, you'd expect systemic complications, and that may include tingling or numbness, especially periorally, as well as um, cardiac abnormalities. So it's important to monitor the patient. However, if we stick to the landmarks that we've discussed, it's a relatively safe procedure to do and can provide analgesia for up anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. It's important to tell the patient that it's notoriously variable in how long the pain relief lasts, but it should help to tide them over until they have their operation. I hope that's clear. Let me know if you have any further suggestions for teaching topics, and please feel free to comment below on my YouTube or my Instagram for any further suggestions. I look forward to seeing you on our next talk. Thank you very much.